Good day ladies and gents, welcome to our next video looking at building analysis. We're going to be going into P-delta effects and second order effects and also notional horizontal loads because we need to account for the fact that any real building is not perfect and there are many different types of imperfections that we need to account for and we're going to look at some of the methods for accounting for this. Now, as I mentioned, there are many inaccuracies in design which are difficult to quantify and accurately analyze. Um, connection deformations and eccentricities. I mean, even in the simple structure shown here, the beams don't tie in exactly at the center of the column, so they will introduce a slight moment. This one, the, they actually made a mistake, and they cast the uh, concrete too low, and then they had to come and modify it afterwards, and that would have led to some slight imperfections in the alignment of the columns. Then there can be construction tolerances, and uh, the columns not being perfectly straight, bolts, connections, various other things coming into that. Residual stresses, we already know that up to 50% um, of stress can be locked in at different positions depending on the cooling of sections and those can cause non-uniformities. There are cross-sectional distortions and uh, yeah, not perfectly uh, geometric as they should be. Then there can be shear deformations which occur, local plasticity as members are loaded and unloaded, foundation support and movements, dynamic effects, and various other ways and or well, various other things. So we're going to learn to account for some of these now using notional horizontal loads and second order analyses. Now here we have a very simple column and there are going to be two types of P-delta effects, P-big delta and P-small belt. Uh, small delta. P big delta is when you have a deformation, a deflection, which causes additional moment, where P small delta, the small delta is imperfections. So if we have a horizontal load, vertical load applied to the simple cantilever, the normal bending moment will just be H, the horizontal load, times the height, but then there will be an additional sway effect, P big delta. So that is a second order effect and we'll count that through a second order analysis. Then there is the construction tolerances out of straightness etc accounted for by notional horizontal loads that P small delta giving you a total bending moment diagram that we need to consider. Now going into this you must think very clear, um, carefully about the fact that we're going to soon start calculating a load to simulate an imperfection. The two are not the same things, so we are going to do something, uh, almost a, a fudge factor, something just to make it work out. The Canadian Steel Code CSA is 16, which our Steel Code 10162 Part 2 is based upon, notes that the concept of notional loads is an internationally recognized technique for transforming a sway buckling problem into a bending strength problem. It accounts for the effect of initial imperfections in the column and for partial yielding at factored load levels. So we are transforming sway buckling into bending strength. We're converting imperfections into loads. And SANS 10162 gives us a specific way of doing this in section 8.7. The tr translational load effects produced by notional lateral loads applied at each story equal to 0 0.005 times factored gravity loads contributed by that story shall be added to the sway effects for all load combinations. And then further along, notional lateral loads are applied in all lateral load combinations and not as a minimum. So they must be always applied, they are always useful, and they simulate a whole bunch of things. Because as I said, notional horizontal loads do the following. Allow for out of plumb construction, so not perfectly straight, and then Safety when high gravity loads associated with small lateral loads, tank on stand. I mean, you can imagine if you have a column that you think is perfectly straight and it has a many thousand kilonewton point load sitting on top of it, even small imperfections will introduce quite high moments. So it's useful to have a small amount of sway just accounting for that imperfection and allow for design of beam columns. So it's quite important just to sort out some of the imperfections in our, our beam column design and a fix for all kind of inaccuracies and inadequacies in models. And you calculate this as total gravity load times 0.005. And depending on what 
load case or load combination you are considering, you just multiply that by 0 0.005. So if you are dealing with an ultimate limit state load, you just multiply the total gravity load, i.e. dead and live, by 0 0.005. If you're just working with a dead load, just take the total dead load times 0 0.005. Most software you would apply it separately as a dead, as a live um, load, and then multiply it, and then you use the software to add it all together. But um, for instance, here is a, a, a double story building where you have roof loads and floor loads. So when it would come to this, I would work out the entire weight of this roof. And let's say that's 10 or 50 or 100 kilonewtons. I would then multiply that by 0 0.005. So suddenly, even though I have a vertical load, vertically downwards of 100 kilonewtons, let's say, I would now apply 0.5 kilonewtons horizontally at that position, or at that position, or at that, just, just one of them. There aren't specific uh, rules regarding where exactly, especially in a, a strange geometry like this, but uh, you apply 0 0.005 horizontally. So just remember this is not a real load. It's to simulate something else. I have 100 kilonewton loads, 100 kilonewtons downwards, and I apply a lateral load to simulate something different, imperfections in this column, and connection problems, etc, etc. If I was dealing with this floor, I would take the entire floor, concrete and steel and imposed loads and load factors etc multiply by 0 0.005 and say get a load of one to five kilonewtons laterally here they're normally quite small loads but they're often just enough to make your perfectly straight column no longer perfectly straight and account then for those sorts of factors and just remember include this in all load cases and then you factor that along with the gravity load okay so that's given a bit of an, an overview of notion or horizontal loads fairly easy to do but often people make mistakes with them but as I said it's not a real load it's simply to simulate something else but then we also have second order effects that we can account for now a second order analysis works as follows structures analyzed using a linear analysis with initial loading and properties so you feed in your geometry and your loads etc you get bending moments and forces then from the initial analysis, the structure is then reanalyzed using the same initial geometry. So we would analyze it, load it, and it would have, let's say, moments and various other forces, get a stiffness. Then in the second part, we take this deformed geometry and account for this, but we have an adjusted stiffness matrix to account for distortion and axial load in members. A member which is distorted has a lower stiffness. When I push on this curved beam, it will distort more easily than if I push on the straight beam. So a second order analysis works by modifying a stiffness matrix. It uses an elastic analysis and then uses an updated elastic analysis with a modified stiffness matrix to account for this. Now, you can also do it in another way. There is also a um, amplification factor that you can apply to an elastic analysis. This is explained in SANS 1016.2 Part 1, Section 8.7. Um, we won't be accounting for that. And just a note, if you are using the, uh, uh, all the Prof. Denisky's notes for this course, just be careful when in those notes it describes a, a second-order analysis. That should rather be thought of as a non-linear analysis. Um, it describes how you take an updated geometry. An updated geometry is, is actually a nonlinear analysis with um, geometric nonlinearity included into it. Okay, so that's just an overview of how we account for imperfections in real life and account for the fact that our beams, columns, everything else is not perfect, and we use these two techniques amongst others to account for that. Thank you very much.